argument is that we've got Hubble Space Telescope in space, so why don't we point it at the Earth to get some awesome shots? It's like, mate, <laughs> you're essentially saying, I've got these binoculars, I'm going to see what my cock looks like. That's not what the tool is for. <laughs> it's not the direction you... Like, you... You basically want Hubble to knock on your door and try and sell you an aerial photo of your house. That's not what the tool's for. Okay. I feel like the the binoculars thing is a bad example. Like, I know what you're saying. It would be dumb to do the Hubble thing, but, like, I mean... God-awful movies. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema, or the spell is broken and Paul Rudd starts to age. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 <laughs> miles to my immediate left is my good friend Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Or am I, Noah? Right. right. Debate me right now. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> yeah. Just summarized the entire episode right there. And sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Healed through the power of crazy, Noah. <laughs> Healed through the power of crazy. All right. And rounding out the panel tonight, sitting 4,100 miles to my east-northeast, if you believe in that sort of thing, is my neutral friend, Michael Marshall. <laughs> Marsh, welcome back. Yeah, actually, Noah, uh, Cardinal Directions are just a Jewish Illuminati Freemason scam. I, I mean, come on, scam. think yep. about it. C Thank Cardinal you. Direction, Cardinal Sin, coincidence? <laughs> <laughs> Can't be. Are, Stanford uh, Cardinal. So, coincidence. Mascot. Jewish people go there. I don't yep, know. There you go. So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched Flat. No. What? It was, it was level. level. It's yep, at the top it. of the thing. <laughs> I thought it was Flat. We watch whatever. It's a flat Earth documentary. Yep. I, we watched one of those. I don't know. I think it's real. I think they tried. I think that it's I, hard. I it's maybe wondered. satire at moments, but I really do think they tried. No, oh, no, 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 no. This is Eric Dubay. This is yeah. not satire from the hip. His Nazi stuff isn't satire. And being a Nazi, mm -mm. Mm -mm. it's not satirical Nazism. No. Mm -mm -mm -mm. <laughs> we'll get to it. So, Eli, how bad was this movie? Well. If you ever told a YouTube commenter to make their own movie and see how that goes, and you meant it, uh -huh. you will <laughs> love this movie. It's YouTube comments the movie, everybody. The movie? Yes, it is. <laughs> it Absolutely really is. is. Oh, is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best to be the worst at? Yes, I would, Noah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with best worst panel of experts mm -hmm. especially their job titles that they yep. they tell us we're gonna I'll, i'm gonna leave it until we get to it the actual job titles but they're so dumb that this is why i thought it was satire i was like oh, right they're making, they had this has to be a joke. you absolutely could not have made up sillier job they're titles so to silly. give these people yeah <laughs> And you could you don't have to put a Chiron. No, nope, if it's you dumb. could just have mm. Dave. Nope. If, right? if the answer's dumb, just have the person start talking. <laughs> but they don't. <laughs> they put up a dumb Chiron that gets dumber and dumber. It's amazing. All right, so I was gonna go with best worst insults. Okay, so throughout this movie, they try out a couple of different epithets for round Earth believers. And I just, I, I feel like they could have done better. I don't think any of them are going to stick. They're trying so hard to figure out a slur for everyone but them. Right, yeah. Uh -huh. Globies. I think they called us a slur, right? During the movie. They called us a slur. I think they called us a slur. They're hoping it's a slur. Hmm. They're certainly hoping. Yeah, they, they've aimed for slur. If they've shot wide of that, that is not through uh, want of missing. <laughs> right, yeah. exactly. If you swing and miss on a slur, I, that's worse, actually, right? <laughs> Well, not to give away some of Heath's throw forward there, but I, I want to go with best worst individual expert because in this documentary, <laughs> we meet for the first time, and I've never met this guy before, Santos Bonacci, who is, he says he's a Ptolemaic astrologer. Uh, yes! Brought in, and at one point, 90% of what he says is bleeped for obscenity. So, so they couldn't keep him on track and clean long enough in their movie. It's not like they were working with nope. clips that already existed. They set him off and they couldn't get him to stop. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, I'm something of an expert in profanity. I could not figure out what this guy was saying. <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> not any time. Never. I want the uncut version of this. Yeah. Marsh, mm. you need to have him on Be Reasonable. Yeah, he, now. He, I mean, I've, I've added him to my list. Oh, I figured, guys, he's gone on my list from here. Uncensored raw. <laughs> raw. I'm going to go with 
best worst introduction to a sentence. <laughs> Podcast listener, we've been doing this show for six and a half years. And I'm going to admit, I was pretty sure I was unbreakable. But there is a sentence introduction so mind boggling and insane in this movie that I have been reborn as a new man who sees the world through different eyes. <laughs> we will get to it. I honestly have no idea which sentence you think. It could be so many sentences. Yeah, it, it could oh, be any one, of them. I, any one of them. I know which one it is. <laughs> you gotta look into your heart because you know. It may have been the greatest three words ever. And like, it was right up there with Jesus, man. We'll get there. We'll yep. get there. <laughs> All right. Well, we've got a lot of inexplicable slow motion talking to prepare for. So we're going to take a quick break, but we're back in a flash with all the primordial argumentation that is. Level. Hi, I'm Eli Bosnick. And I'm Heath Enright. You know, here on God Awful Movies, we try to keep our ads fun and interesting with little sketches, songs and comedic shenanigans. But sometimes... We need to take a break from those shenanigans because the sponsor is just so good. We just tell you about it. Yeah. And there's no better example than this week's first sponsor, Trade Coffee, who don't sell CBD stuff, Marsh, for the record. Oh, yeah, yeah. Very proud of you guys. Well done on that. Thank you. It is well done. Thank you, Marsh. So Trade sells the freshest roasted and ethically sourced beans from America's best independent roasters. They ship free to you as often as you like, whole or ground. They gave us a three-month trial for free, and I don't know about you, Heath, but I loved every blend they sent me so much that I signed up as a customer, which, I'm not going to lie, felt a little weird using my own coupon code on something, but it was that great. I just signed up for Trade Coffee. So whether you're a coffee nerd or just want a better daily cup, Trade's real coffee experts taste test over 400 roasts and use technology to match you to your ideal coffee based on your preferences and brewing method. And for our listeners, right now, Trade Coffee is offering a total of $20 off your first three bags when you go to drinktrade.com slash awful. To get started, take the quiz at drinktrade.com slash awful and start your journey to your perfect cup. That's drinktrade.com slash awful for $20 off your first three bags. Trade Coffee, a product so good, we can just talk about it. Feels awkward not to have a punchline. Yeah, it feels awkward. I, I yeah. agree a little bit. Yes. Yeehaw! I'm a country cowboy! Thank you, Marsh. Perfect. Much better. Yes. Nice. You're welcome. <laughs> Where are you from? <laughs> All right, guys, it's time to make our Flat Earth documentary level. Y'all. All right. Uh, and if I do say so myself, and, I, and I'm gonna, I think we've gathered the finest minds possible to do it. First, uh, there's Odd. He's a rapper whose songs are mostly about how he hates the Jews. What up, man? For show, for show. Now, uh, we also have a Brazilian so jiu-jitsu. Me too, man. We also have a Brazilian jiu-jitsu participant. Uh, who gives a fuck? Nobody. Hey, guys, I am ready to roll with the earth. That's right, nice. man. It's, That's like a, it's a BJJ <laughs> thing, right? Roll. Yeah. You guys say that? Barely yeah. even nice. a sentence. And of course... There's beauty with the brains over here. We got Brzezinka Barnica. She's here. I see that you're recovering well from your botched eyeball liposuction. Jungle dining. Yeah, now cool. let's put the facts out there and narrate like we're challenging our kid's mom's new husband to a fight outside our child support hearing, huh? <laughs> no, I, I actually did that. No, <laughs> me I, I, me too. Me, me too. It is the exact <laughs> same thing that you just said. Well, I can't have children because of the incident. What? Yeah, you're kind of bringing down the mood, Brzezinka. Get a brain shot. Yeah, we know. We know. <laughs> I don't even know what those are meant to be. <laughs> nope, me neither. <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up with a new twist on the FBI warning. Apparently, the movie is warning the FBI. <laughs> they, they warned the FBI. It's so good. <laughs> It's like, we know the fucking law, but it lo looks like the FBI warning, but it's them yelling that, which is yeah, uh -huh. never in history a good sign when somebody yells, we know the law. No, nope. nope. <laughs> never, never something good happened after that. Like nine out of 10 times, if you yell, we know the law, electricity is about to course it's through your body so they can, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yes. <laughs> and you deserve it. 
And then we go to the logos. Quick, don't blink. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we don't see a lot. Like, nothing screams we couldn't afford to hire a graphic designer than showing us the logo for three quarters of a second or less. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, maybe the logo just disappeared over the not horizon. Maybe oh, that's, that's what it. That could here. be it. That could be it. Here's the thing. If your logo says Hibbler Productions, which... <laughs> Uh, in three quarters of a second, looks a lot like Himmler or Hitler Productions. It's, it mm. looks as much like it sounds like that. Yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. Maybe spread it out for a couple seconds uh, so I can fully it. read that it's not yeah. Himmler Maybe you or Hitler. start with the B, right? You start with the B and let the rest of the word fill in around it, right? Or if your name's Hibbler, you name your production company something else that's not your last name. Yeah, yeah, Steve know. Productions. It's Steve Productions. Yeah, there Steve. you go. Fucking yep, Steve, you have a man. first name, too. Mm-hmm. So we get that, then we open on the earth and the narrator cuts in and says, do you believe this is a live recording? And I'm like, I'm watching it on YouTube. So no, (laughs) I don't believe that. Also, we can see this massive white light source above the earth, which very clearly isn't the sun. So Mm -hmm. also no. Yeah, right. right. He might as well be showing us the universal logo. Right, and they're like, they will do in a second. Or yeah, right. They're like, believe it or not, (laughs) this is CGI. We're like, well, (laughs) well, yeah. So then we get their credits, and it's so funny because they're all like, you know, they've all heard of each other, so they're real proud of it, right? Oh my god, rough. Well, I've I've heard of some of these. I'd I'd heard of Dave Murphy. In fact, I've met Dave Murphy, the person that they've got in here. Seriously? Uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he did a talk at the UK Flat Earth Convention. And then when I give a talk, I I toured the UK doing my talk about the Flat Earth Convention and the Flat Earth Movement. And when I did the talk in Brighton, he was there, which was awkward because I talk (laughs) about him in the talk. So there's a bit where I'm sort of like on the talk, pointing at my PowerPoint going, and this is Dave Murphy. And then pointing at the audience and going, and that is Dave Murphy. <laughs> and, and they believe this. He's got the same backwards fitted hat as in the pic. Wow. That's, is that your one? Is that the guy? Is the guy who always no, had the, the- uh, No, no. It's the guy from Basel in England. Oh, yeah. the, uh, the, okay. the, the, the British guy. Yeah, yeah. He's the guy who drinks his own piss and doesn't like me. Okay. And uh, that's that's not one of the jokes that we do on this show. He literally drinks and washes with his own piss. That's the thing Fun. that he does with his own piss. He is the least crazy looking of their cast, he by is, the way. He is, and, and the least crazy talking, yep. He's probably the most crazy smelling. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if someone drinks their own pee, you want them not to like you. Yep. I think you have there to you ask go. questions about yeah. yourself if someone who drinks their I've own pee likes you. <laughs> never bothered to be. So that's a, that's a true fact about people who drink their own pee. The other thing, the other true fact about people who wash in their own pee is you want them to tell you that before you shake their hands and not afterwards. Fair, yep. Fair. Sure. Mm. Fair. <laughs> but now your hand is, you know, uh, COVID free or right, whatever. Yeah, my hand's right, not going to no get 5G, cancer. No cancer. So the credits wrap up and the narrator explains to us that flat earth was actually a top search term from 2015 to 2017. And the point he's making isn't (laughs) that Americans are profoundly stupid. Or I mean, that's not like what he's trying, the point he's trying to make. Okay, so was Matt Lauer. That was another top search. I think it was the number two search term in all of 2017 in the US. It's not a good thing. He points out that while while much of America was look was you know trying to elect Donald Trump, the rest of us were figuring out that the world is flat. But his point is, you know, right around the time that America did something incredibly stupid, they also thought the world was flat. Yes. That's not a point in his column. Nope. Right, right. At the absolute height of disinformation, flat earth was a popular search term. <laughs> and then it's time for us to meet our first expert of this, <laughs> I guess, geology slash astrophysics documentary. He's an out of work rapper. Mm. Yep. Earth scientist number one. There will be six, I believe. <laughs> Earth scientist number one is a person named Odd TV. Mm-hmm. That's a O dot D dot D. Uh, I don't know what it stands for, but Odd TV. He's a very bad white rapper. Yes. Really bad. He is. And as they interview him, it seems like they're interviewing him under the only bush on his entire land because he's in complete darkness. And thought, right. Did he only agree to appear in this under the cover of anonymity? Is that why <laughs> yeah, yeah. he's completely cast in shadow? I think he's half in witness protection and he doesn't really know what that means. Right, that... the right half of his... Uh, yeah, right, So he, exactly. he shadowed out like half his face. Guys, it's okay. They only saw me in profile, so... And there's a Chiron with his name. So like, <laughs> what are you doing? 
I'll also point out at this point, I got loads of ads all the way through this. And at this point, one minute into it or so, it cut to an ad for HelloFresh. And I thought, God, don't you hate it when you're trying to consume a piece of media and they start just talking about HelloFresh out of nowhere. And you're like, guys, this is not what I tuned in for. (laughs) We all get frustrated by that. Uh Do you up? We'll get it together. We'll help. (laughs) (laughs) But Odd TV explains to us that you never see pictures of the curvature of the earth except in all the places where you do see it, which are all bullshit, right? <laughs> yeah. So flat earthers get a lot of mileage, or at least they, they they think they do, out of the fact that like sometimes when you think you're seeing the curvature of the earth, you're looking through a fisheye lens and don't realize it, you know, things like that. Yeah, yeah. So they're making this point, but of course they're overstating it and saying, but there are no pictures that show the curvature of the earth. Yeah, he says, I couldn't find the curvature of the Earth, so there isn't one. It's like, yeah, but you also couldn't find a better rap name than Odd TV, so you're not. (laughs) Or a spot in your fucking yard where you wouldn't be in darkness. (laughs) And what he meant is he, like, walked outside, looked left, right, other two. No, not (laughs) curvy. Yeah, but damn it, if he was just going to sit around and do nothing... Well, everybody else was going around saying that the earth was round. So he decided to rap battle the roundness of the earth, I guess. Yeah. (laughs) And he talks about how when you go higher up, the horizon, first of all, the horizon rises to eye level. Which he says, which would be impossible on a ball. And I don't know what he thinks (laughs) eye level means. Right. Yes, that would depend. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I wonder whether he's equally confused that you can see further round a corner in the road if you step into the road rather than stay on the pavement. You see a little bit further when you step into the curve. Oh. He's equally confused by that, I imagine. Eye level is supposed to fall away from you? What is, I, what is that? So, what does he think he said? Well, yeah, but but he... So, like, right when you're about to dismiss him as some kind of crank, he explains that he did his own research on YouTube and that was back in the heyday of YouTube when, you know, there was really no check on disinformation. Yeah, he says it was an awesome time for YouTube between 2015 and 2017. Mm. And I just wrote in my notes, strong disagree. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Almost took down democracy itself. Yeah. But in case you're not convinced yet, they show us one frame of a Google ad with no context that says the earth is flat. <laughs> uh, this really irritated me because like, well why would google mention the flat earth in a commercial i was like mate probably as an example of what people will believe in if they don't have access to information <laughs> <laughs> you are the worst case scenario you are the before and google wants to be the after right there's a picture of you and then a, a line that says there's got to be a better way yes <laughs> <laughs> It's literally just a commercial where they typed out the words, the earth is flat. And then they said other things after nope. there was content. Like there was no Thomas Friedman agrees yeah. with us. The world is <laughs> right. flat. He wrote yeah, a fucking a novel about, about it. it. What are you talking about? <laughs> the world's a fucking oyster, according to an yeah. old say. I don't know. Oyster. His no less. <laughs> so, yeah. But according to Odd TV, YouTube was, quote, collapsing with truth. <laughs> mm. And then so and then we show this like YouTube representative talking to Congress and they say like, oh, you will, you know, we're trying to demote low quality content that's full of demonstrable lies. And the orchestra goes, Dah. yeah, they're, they're trying to make we're going to try and be more transparent and include more facts. Sound sinister. <laughs> that's the yes. that's the bad guy thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And the lady from YouTube, she's she's laughing. She's like, yeah, so we're, we're, we're putting a little thing that says you guys are stupid on yeah. those videos. From now. <laughs> Which is sitting below this video the whole time, by the way. Yeah, and the politician jumps yep. in and tries to stop her and, and says, yeah, yeah, whatever. And that, the reason the politician jumps in is because even the politician recognizes that adding a no, it isn't pop up to an Earth is flat video is a weak response that is not good enough for YouTube. Right. That's why he interrupts her. <laughs> Well, but then they explained the real nefarious plan that YouTube had. It wasn't to get rid of them. It was to get new videos making these round earth claims from all of their puppets. <laughs> yep. Uh, and there's there's a lovely bit at the start of this where it shows people on TV all around the world sort of show it, saying like, oh, and aren't these flat earthers out there now? There's all these flat earthers. And the point that they say in the movie is, well, now they're talking about the flat earth. So yeah, 
they're saying you're obviously wrong and evidently an idiot. That yes. isn't a plus. Well, at least they're talking about me. Yeah, they're calling you names and calling you stupid. That's not good for you. Right. <laughs> There's like a whole montage of video clips where a bunch of smart people point out how stupid this video is. I'm like, why did you guys put this in? <laughs> are we supposed to be like, is he, are we supposed to be getting sympathetic to how mean Neil deGrasse Tyson is being to you? <laughs> Fuck. Oh, did we do this thing? I think we forgot to do this thing music after Neil. Like he said, he just said yeah. his point. Damn. Fuck. It's too late. So, and then they provide for us their first piece of evidence, I guess. And it is, this is the evidence, right? The argument, I said primordial arguments because I don't think these ever quite coalesce into full arguments. But the argument is, sure looks like the sun is moving to me. <laughs> yeah. Right? They do the, the, the fucking sun video recreation. Yeah, it's like, does it look like the sun is traveling across our sky? No, 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 it doesn't. But then they're like, well, what if we show it again with some digital manipulation that I've done to prove my point? Does it now? It's like, well, now you've digitally manipulated it a little bit. Yes, it does. But you've digitally manipulated it. But even then, not really. So like, no, this no, reminds me of the like when the when Joe Rogan would say that the trade towers looked like a controlled demolition, right? Like, compared to what other naturally collapsing <laughs> skies? You haven't seen a bunch of suns that are moving across the sky and a bunch of suns that are stationary as the fucking world turns. <laughs> what the fuck are you comparing it to? Do they think the sun is flat too? I don't think so. They, th it they think the Earth who, is flat. Some of them do. Some of them think it's like a torch, so it might have a slightly bowed front, like a, a mm -hmm. yeah, sorry, yeah. convex front. Others think it's a ball. They know about depth, then. The dimension. <laughs> <laughs> they know about depth as a dimension, but they don't add it to their arguments yeah. or their logic. They like to keep those <laughs> okay. nice and superficial. I, I just want to say I'm not comfortable <laughs> saying they know about depth as a statement on the <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> One of the clips in here is great because it is a fisheye lens which shows the sun going down and then coming up again because it must be a sun like near one of the poles where you don't get like full right. night there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But in their world where they think the sun starts to get further away from you and that's how night happens, what do they think happened here? Right. Do they think it was like the sun was going away and then like forgot its wallet or something and so came back for it. So like at the furthest point, the sun like stops and then pats all of its pockets in this really exaggerated way. Like, uh, oh, I forgot something. Just in case anyone's watching and they don't feel embarrassed by it. Yeah. You know, the sun forgot its mask in the car and it's like, oh God, I hate COVID. <laughs> okay. They made, I'm pretty, they made like a sting video of the sun getting yes. caught, not setting all the way. That's what they right. they're showing us. Yeah. And, and let's point out that they do not say at any time that this is video of some, you know, North Pole ass shit. Right. Chris Hansen just comes out and he's like, ah, that's exactly <laughs> what I was going to say. Went back the other way. Chris Hansen just turns to the sun. Have a seat for me. Come on. <laughs> And just as you're thinking to yourself, wait, what's that smell? It's time for us to meet Dave Murphy. <laughs> Dave Murphy. Now, he he's the first of Heath's best worsts. He's, <laughs> he's like... Well, he's the second. I believe uh, oh, Odd right. TV was Earth Scientist number one. This is Earth Scientist number two. No, I'll give him credit. Well, but the, he's the first one that gets the great job title listing, right? The other guy was just <laughs> okay, yes. rap artist. Yes, he does. He is, Dave he is quote, <laughs> former Wall Street computer programmer. That's not a... <laughs> Not a thing there. I could go to Wall Street and program a computer. Anyway, <laughs> slash volunteer firefighter. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> and it's not clear if former like distributive property goes to both of those. Oh, you're like, right. He didn't quite make no, it as right. a volunteer fireman either. I can fill in a bit of his backstory if you guys want. So he was a volunteer fireman in New Jersey. And he became a 9-11 truther after 9-11 happened. Yep. Oh, my God. Dave Murphy's New Jersey is every episode for a while. Because he wasn't involved in all of that. He saw it from a distance. He saw that was that was all happening. He became a 9-11 truther. And then in his own words that he gets upset, if you quote, he says on his website that after that, he had a midlife crisis that led him to live off the grid and start drinking his own piss. And then he became a flat earther. <laughs> mm. That is a brief biography. Cool. So there is a downhill. <laughs> Dave Murphy is just the proof that there's a downhill from 9-11 truther. We just didn't yeah. know that for sure. <laughs> yep. We suspected it. But yeah, so he starts making some arguments here. These are fascinating to me because I cannot, for the life of me, figure out what the fuck he's trying to say. If the sun was round and the earth was round, all the light would be parallel. Right. No. Which it wouldn't. No, no. Mm -mm. no. No, it wouldn't. If they were flat. <laughs> it, 
if it was flat, it'd be parallel. And faced each other. If they were massively far away, it would feel like they were parallel. But the bigger point to me is, what does he mean by the light? How does he know the light around him isn't right. parallel? When you look around and say, oh man, there's meant to be loads of parallel light here, but every light beam that I see is fucking converging. Right, I can't it's all move diagonal and shit. Light. <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck could that mean? <laughs> okay, I think he's a flat sunner too. I think they're flat sunners. <laughs> so he, 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 I think he is. I think he's, he's. I don't think they know that they're flat sunners, but they are. He might not be a flat sunner. He's definitely a small near sunner. Yes, the sun is very small and very near. <laughs> right. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why. That's why the light is converging. So he's not a flat sunner. He's a round sunner because the the light has to come out of the sun convergently, so it all converges up at the sun. Right. What? Well, and then to prove that they show like these shadows where the light is diffused through clouds and shit, and be like, how did the light get diffused through that cl- cloud? You just said cloud. You said you said it. Yeah. Now, what is what is a cloud made of in your head? This argument is 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 really really stupid for two reasons. One is you're absolutely right. Those clouds are made of water vapor. You've got yourself a prism there. Case closed. But also too, those light beams that they're showing, they're not hitting the cloud necessarily and dispersing wide. That is also what it would look like if the light was really far away from you, coming sort of straight at you. But then as it gets close to you, there's bits going either side of you. You know, it's like right. if you hold whole things that are relatively parallel to a convergent point at you, as it gets close to you, it's going to look like it's really wide. At you. Do you know what I mean? It's like that's, okay. yeah, it's just that the sun's fucking miles away, mate. It's it's nothing hard on that. Hold on. Hold on, Marsh. What I have another theory. Mm. There might be a second light shooter sun on the grassy knoll. <laughs> oh, and that oh, is why that makes sense. they're not parallel. My favorite thing about this section is that he gets interrupted by himself, criticizing himself, and then he gets nasty with himself. It's like, but what about this? And he's like, shut the fuck up, me. Well, so, you yeah, know, that they have a guy cut in there, right? Because they have a dude come in and say, well, wait a minute. If the, sun, the earth was flat, wouldn't it always be sunny? But he asked the question in his dumb guy voice. So we know it's a stupid question. And we're very glad that we didn't ask that stupid question. Yeah. Right. And Dave Murphy's like, <laughs> you stupid whore. What right, a dumb yeah. question. I'm so glad you asked. And then he doesn't even have a good answer. No, he doesn't. <laughs> it's so sad. He always talks about the sun being up as well. It's like, oh, the sun is just up. It's like six miles above the surface of me. It's up. But like up isn't a meaningful direction on a spinning up ball anyway. <laughs> you know, it's it's like saying you're on a fairground ride and your mum is stood watching and she's to your left. If you're going right. around the fairground, she's not always to your left. The sun isn't always up. It's relative. They keep doing that for the whole yeah. movie too. They just they they're locked in on there's this up principle in their head. That I don't know what it's based. It, God is there. Well, and they have this amazing like he tries to do this visualization of how the sun works in his mind, which would be like imagine a flat round Earth in a in a flashlight just being moved around the edges of it sort of from the middle right sure if that's confusing to you um we, we get, get a <laughs> in the movie so like i know i know us describing a flashlight over a table is very difficult right but we see it and i i got it once i saw it well well hey how big would that flashlight have to be would you say in say millimeters to the nearest point <laughs> one of a millimeter uh I, I, well 3.4 yeah but then then it's going to be a certain distance away from centimeters? like a table or something isn't it yeah uh so 21 uh i, I go further i go i go centimeters? So like, Dave's specificity is he's like, if you imagine a two meter table in a dark room with a 3.4 millimeter light bulb, 31 centi- centimeters away from it. And if you imagine you've drank 268 milliliters of your own <laughs> urine that morning as well. <laughs> so. Yeah, I got lost on all the, yeah, the, the metric stuff. That's why I, my demon, I did it at home and I, I did get confused. Gotcha. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So. You do it Imperial. <laughs> Right, yeah. Well, so, the, but the point, though, uh, of course, by using all these very specific numbers, he's trying to make it sound like he's just made a point, right? Yeah. But he can't help but undermine his own point because then, you know, the obvious question is, okay, but even if the sun wasn't over you, if it was that bright, you could just see it when it was over there in the sky if the earth is fucking flat. Yeah. Right? At night, if we just looked <laughs> north, we would see this gigantic goddamn light. And he explains that, no, you wouldn't because it would be too dark where you are to see the light. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> if you're stood in shadow, you can't see light. If you're stood in the shade, you can't see a light it's bulb. it's so dark. <laughs> yep. It's too dark for you to see the light. That's all he says. He's, he thinks he's about to make this huge point because he set up this whole thing with numbers and units and metric and a flashlight. And then he's like, okay, so you've, you've got it all locked in, right? With all the numbers and stuff. The dark parts, dark <laughs> cut, 
Right. So that's by definition, there's no light. He goes, it's the sunlight. This is there is no sunset. It's all local light. And I'm like, there's no sun at this point. It's gaslight, motherfucker. We all watch that shit. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, we see a local sun and it's taking its local light with it. Like a kind of it's it's my not a ball. So I'm taking it home if you won't play by my rules. (laughs) He also explains to us here that sunsets tend to fade because of all the exact quote dander and chemtrails <laughs> yeah i don't know which of those is weirder oh i missed that did he actually say chemtrails like the chemtrails is weird but dander dander like right. the bits of skin from a cat or something yeah. <laughs> like, yes. yep. you walk into someone's house and you're like i'm so sorry do you have a cat or a jewish conspiracy plane because i am just <laughs> oh my nose i can't even see you there's one bit that I do need to bring in, right? Because during this, they're talking about what the images of the flat earth that they have showed you to try and put you off, right? And it flashes through all these different images of what's wrong about the flat earth. And importantly, some of the images that they show at this point were images from Mark Sargent, the famous flat earther who did flat earth clues yes, that he's covered uh-huh. on this show. And that's really important because... The whole reason this exists is because Mark Sargent was in the Netflix documentary and not Eric DeBay. And Eric DeBay's pissy about that. So he's made a do- <laughs> So he included these things in the middle of this. Oh, and that's the guy who's, they're, they're saying, and nobody promoting this bullshit would know anything about. Yeah. That's the guy. <laughs> when they show Mark Sargent's things that no one promotes this bullshit stands for the truth. Like, whoa, shots fired, Mark Sargent. But, you know, Christians, so they censored bullshit. Right. Oh, yeah. It's an idiot fight. He's mad. He's not the captain the idiots that's amazing that's awesome yeah i'm so happy about that. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah so they show us some more clouds and they go eh eh and we're like what eh and then they go so what about the moon <laughs> yeah that was my yep, next question right because now that they've cleared up all the sun stuff and they explain to us here that the moon is essentially like a little sissy sun it's the opposite. Yes, it's, we we yes. all agree it has the opposite effects from the sun, which what? I think is the stupidest line in this. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we all know, obviously, the, the moon has the exact opposite effects of the sun. You know, the moon makes things darker. It kills sunburn. It kills plants. Everybody is aware <laughs> of these features of the moon. <laughs> And they say, well, you know, it's so weird. They tell you that the moon doesn't have cold moonlight that cools <laughs> things down. But why then is it warmer in the shade when the moon's out? I'm like, yes, why would shaded places radiate less heat into the atmosphere than oh, unshaded places? This is, this is one of my favorite <laughs> stupid flat earth arguments. Like shade during a hot day is cooler than not shade, but shade during a cold night is less cold than not being exposed than being out exposed to the right. entire air. It's like, well, think of it this way. Like, you know how your skin gets hotter in the sun when it's uncovered, but if you're naked outside in the middle of the night, you get cold. That's because the world's flat. <laughs> you lost me. <laughs> it's because too much moon has sucked all the heat off of you. Oh, I want to talk about black and white footage. Wrong man. Can oh we talk my about God. black and white the, footage? The legacy. The, this is what they're hoping to become one day. This guy. <laughs> Because <laughs> this is fucking amazing. I had never seen this guy brought up before. And of course, it must have happened that like at the time before we actually went to the moon, there was a guy who managed to get on TV who was like, nope, moon's not real. It's fucking toxic plasma or whatever the fuck Cosmic he called it. Cosmic plasma. Yeah. Cosmic plasma. <laughs> I'm right. like, wait, where is the other plasma? What other kind of plasma would there be? Do you know who this guy is? Spiritual no. plasma? <laughs> Because nobody on the internet knows who this guy is. Really? He's called Professor R. Forster, and that is all of the information that exists about him. <laughs> anywhere that I can find. I've never heard of this guy, and when I tried to research him, I found fuck all. So yeah, this film doesn't even give his full name, so you know he's legit. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair to him, like four weeks after he filmed that interview, we landed on the fucking moon on national yeah. television. <laughs> Right, his entire interview about how the moon isn't made of rock, it's made of cosmic plasma. It's a ama- he's like he might as well be in the middle of the interview being like it's actually made of cheese vapor. You couldn't right. possibly land on it. They landed on the moon? It- what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, like the just now? <laughs> Are you serious? Like the Four Seasons interview. Yeah. Oh, you beat me to it. They pull away the background. He's at the Four Seasons yeah. landscaping yeah. as well. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, it's the the quickly Kevin will he score of the moon landing. Now that means nothing <laughs> to you guys, but British <laughs> listeners who are who understand the uh, f- the history of English football teams will know quickly Kevin will he score. Yes, he misses. That's exactly what happened here. That's exactly <laughs> what this guy's doing. All right, that's going to not land with you guys, but I don't care. <laughs> Is that how you guys haven't won the World Cup since 1960 so, or whatever? Uh, One of those times? 60, 66, yeah. 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 Actually, so. we, we won the World Cup between this guy saying we wouldn't land on the moon and then landing on the moon. And we've got about as close to winning the World Cup as we've got to <laughs> landing on the moon. We are much better. I'm moving on. Yep, from there you go. Uh, nope. So yeah, so and they also claim that we can see stars through the moon. This is a great argument. And we're like, would you like to show us a video of that? They're like, we would not like to show you a video or a photograph of that, no. <laughs> what, what I love about this <laughs> argument is, I saw this argument debunked at the Flat Earth Conference by Dave Murphy, who said this was a stupid argument. <laughs> he gave a presentation about how stupid this argument was. <laughs> awesome. You ever think about the fact that like, Flat earthers get to permanently live in the 1600s where all scientists and doctors just got to turn to each other and be like, nope, turns out you're not supposed to light someone's balls on fire. Oh, damn, <laughs> science. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, no, but they live so much. They live like 2,000 years before. We've known that the earth is round <laughs> since like 500 BC. It's 1592, Heath. We'll learn this soon. It was 1592 <laughs> and it was the Jesuits. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. No, you're right. <laughs> So, yeah, but just as you're thinking to yourself, like, plasma, we've landed people on the moon. Then you remember where we are and we enter mm. into the moon landing hoax phase of this stream of consciousness ass video. Right? They literally, they actually present the, if Neil Armstrong was the first person on the moon, who took the video argument? Oh, my God, that's so amazing. Mm. Okay, that was a compelling question. What, like... <laughs> Just yeah. a, there was just a camera on the outside. They knew this was going to happen. The plan was for him to walk on the moon the whole time. <laughs> but did camera person? Did they have an argument about like where the camera? Like the camera? Did the did the camera have to go? No, out there the camera. First? There was just a camera on the out mounted on the outside of that landing vehicle. Yeah, on like one of the the legs. Very convenient. Yeah. So no, no, no. Who was the cameraman? And also, you know, who was the best boy? And who was the key? Yeah, right. Well, exactly. Who was the who, runner? <laughs> <laughs> who scouted the location? Who was taking care of craft services? Come on. Okay, Marsh and Noah, I will need you to talk me down from all the moon landing stuff. <laughs> so starting now. Good, good job yep, on that first yep. one. We'll see how you do. Okay. Also, I'm sorry. We are going to need to not skimp over who presents us with that argument. Eyebrows girl. Yes. Uh huh. Who is like someone saw my Melania Trump character and they were like. But Cockney, though. But Cockney. <laughs> yeah. It's like, could, could you imagine her, but could she be from Leeds in the north, right. of, north yes, of England? There and you that's, go. that's the one thing missing from it. Yeah. Leeds. Her eyebrows appear, and I don't blame them, appear to be trying to escape the thoughts in her brain mm-hmm. and literally get further and further apart in between shots. Yes. <laughs> Well, and then this is an amazing argument, too. He shows this press conference and he's like, oh, like, do these people look like they're about to go to the moon? They look bored to me. And I'm like, yeah, look how bored the astronauts look during this long press conference while they're on a grueling ass training schedule getting no sleep. Fuck you. He literally makes the argument. If they went to the moon, how come they didn't hug? Yeah, yeah. And I, I thought this press conference was once they were back. I couldn't remember. I, did, I wasn't sure if it was either way. I, I thought it was basically like, yeah, they're fucked from having a really massive, weird, intense trip. And now they've got to sit in Congress in front of people. But no, you know, why didn't Buzz Aldrin hug every politician he met? Right. Now, I've never once seen Buzz Aldrin tongue kiss a sitting U.S. senator and therefore the world's flat. <laughs> yeah, no, they show us both. They make the argument on both sides of it. They're like, do these people look like they're about to go to the moon? Does this guy look like he just came back to the moon? I'm like, those are the only people we've ever seen go to the fucking moon! <laughs> yeah. So, do, do they look like they're about to be sent on a mission where there is a very high chance they're going to die and die yeah. in a really public way, like right in front of their friends and family in a big explosion and stuff? Yeah! Also, it was the 1960s, my dude. Most people didn't hug their fucking dad on his deathbed. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if your whole moon landing theory rested on the fact that Michael Collins looked a bit grumpy. Yeah. Was like, yeah, they paid me to pretend I was walking to the moon and, and you know, so they could enti- lie to the entire world, but they stopped just short of a sum where I do it with a smile. You've got to set yourself right, yeah. standards. <laughs> exactly. No, but that's... That's not a joke. That's yeah, their, the movie's theory is seriously. Well, the conspiracy couldn't afford to pay him for the hugging and smiling money. <laughs> yep. Like seriously, that's the theory. Yeah. yeah. 
They think the astronauts were delivering the same performance as Tobey Maguire in the latest Spider-Man movie. <laughs> just like, all right, I'm here. I'm fucking here. Well, it, but so that he he's he's got one of them talking before Congress, and he's like, look at this. He never even looks up from his notes. If he'd been to the moon, you'd think he would be a better public speaker. <laughs> what? That's not that, that's not the criteria we send people to the moon on. But he did what? no speech and debate on the moon. Yeah, this, this guy was really good at the after dinner event. Actually, yeah. he, he had some really <laughs> hilarious anecdotes. He's been an absolute riot on the moon. They actually, they actually think the conspiracy people are like, "Fuck, we should have spent that extra money on yep. smiling and hugging." Yeah, we did. The, this one guy caught us because of that. I told you we should have spent that money. And and their clause out to this argument is. They haven't had the balls to fake another. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to make a response to this video where I argue that testicles are actually flat and anyone who thinks they're a ball shape is paid by the Jews. Debate me right now. Yeah, right. Come on, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Show us your balls. <laughs> All right. Well, we've just switched conspiracy horses mid-race at this point, so I need a minute to catch up. So we're just going to take a quick break. But on the other side of it, there will be even more level. Hi, I'm Eli Bosnick. And I'm Michael Marshall. Do you believe the world is flat and that a secret cabal of Jews is hiding the truth from us? Well, then you might want to try therapy or medication or, you know, both. But you don't have to be in a schizophrenic fugue state for therapy to work. And that's why there's better help. Sometimes you just need someone impartial to talk through the stresses of everyday life with. Or someone who can help you understand and manage your emotions. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp online therapy. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and God Awful Movies listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash awful. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash awful. They also don't sell CBD stuff. Have you have you considered therapy to help you get over this? No. Well, there it is. So much money, Marsh. <laughs> All right, you ready for your tattoo? Yep, let's do it. All right, let's get started. Cool. So where are you from? Oh, God, uh, all over, actually. I grew up as a military brat, so... Yeah, I'm from all over the globe, in a way. Just uh, all over the place. It's so funny that you say globe. Oh, why is that funny? Well, have you heard of flat earth theory? Well, that's good right there. Cool. Huh? Wait, um, yeah, tattoo. It looks great. Uh, all set. Thank you so much. That's uh, awesome. Dude, I've just, I barely even got started. Right, right, right. But honestly, I, I like it better this way. Uh, kind of minimalist. You know, I think it's perfect. But didn't you say this was a memorial for your cousin? Mm, yeah, yeah. But I, I think I would have, uh, you know, I think he would have wanted a little like, uh, a little black squiggle like that. He'd he'd love that. This is perfect. It's, it's a perfect. dude. You already paid me five hundred bucks. No, no, it's money well spent. Yep. So where's my coat? No, never mind. I see it. I see my coat. It's all good. Uh, do you, are you? I mean, do you want to wait for your ride to show up? There's a no, blizzard no, outside. No, I'm good. I'm great. Thank you. Man, that's like the fourth one this week. I must draw a damn good squiggle. This is better. This is better than the other thing. I like this better. I made a good decision. <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit, and we're going to rejoin the action on, quite possibly, the greatest three words ever spoken in a god-awful movie. <laughs> okay. This is, this is Eli's thing? Yes. Yep. Yeah, right, we're about choice. to meet our next talking head, <laughs> And he opens up his monologue on the nature of astrophysics with the words, <laughs> Eli, would you like to do the honors? As a tattooer. That's not even what your profession <laughs> is called. Here's, is here's my notes for this scene. As a tattooer. As a tattooer. As a tattooer. <laughs> Guys, guys, as a tattooer, as a tattooer, as a tattooer, as a tattooer. I will not start a sentence again in my life without as a tattooer. Mm. As a tattooer, I will begin sentences as a tattooer for the rest of my life as a tattooer. Our guest listener, as you can hear, I have a little bit of a baby cold right now. I got a cold from a baby. Worth it. But still, I have a cold. So I was on vocal rest all day yesterday so I could do this funny, fun podcast for you today. I broke that vocal rest and screamed the words as a tattooer when I heard this and then lost my voice again. <laughs> the only words I spoke 
on Thursday, February 24th, or as a tattooer at the top of my possible voice. <laughs> oh, so yeah, so this is Johnny Giampapa. In addition to tattooer, he is also listed as, quote, blind nobility CEO, co-owner of Opus Glove, which I really want to just be a glove him and his buddy went in. <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate in jerk-off device. <laughs> yep. Uh, it's it's not great that so far the movie's experts have been a rapper, a tattooer, and a guy who drinks his own piss. That yeah, that's the what dream we've team. got so far. <laughs> and can I just say, guy who drinks his own piss, most reliable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And just to keep track, this is Earth Scientist number three. Yes. His name is Johnny. Not John. Mm-mm. Not Jonathan. Nope. Johnny. Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> and he gives one of the best arguments. Marsh, you've probably heard this before. I haven't. He says, if NASA was legit, all they'd have to do to prove the round Earth would to take one of their so-called satellites, mm-hmm. zoom all the way in on an Australian driving their car upside down. <laughs> yes. Yes. What? That cannot really be one of their arguments, oh, right? 100%. 100%. This is several of the arguments in Eric DeBay's 200 Proofs the Earth is Not a Spinning Ball, which he brought <laughs> out in like 2016, 2017, something like that, which is what kicked off the Modern Flat Earth movement. This is sev- In fairness to him, I think some of his arguments in that are we should zoom in on Paris and see the Eiffel Tower side on, which is slightly less stupid, only slightly less stupid by like an order of magnitude given the size of the Eiffel Tower than the people in Australia in a car. But the thing is, what I love about this is, right, let's imagine that NASA had the kind of technology that they could zoom all the way in to people individually in a car moving around in real time. You would lose your shit if that was a thing that existed. You would freak the fuck out. All right. These people would be crazy about the idea that a satellite was tracking them to the level that they could watch you driving your car and see you in the car. That's why we don't have that kind of weird sp- spy satellite. Like it's some sort of fucking sci-fi where you're sh- shouting enhance image at the computer <laughs> until yeah. you see the atoms you're made out of. But has nobody ever just like shown him a picture of an Australian person, like a physical photo and then been like... Brrr. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see what's happening, buddy? And, that, and he was like, show me a demigorgon walking on a fucking ceiling. That don't count. Like, what? <laughs> what is happening in his head? So, yeah. So, and then he explains that or we, we have to discredit Buzz Aldrin, right? Because he's such a vocal opponent of him being a liar as a theory. <laughs> so they show this video where Buzz is, I'm going to say conservatively in his Late 110s. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? This is a century after he walked on the moon, 100%. Right. <laughs> and he stumbles over his words a little bit such that if unless you allow him to finish his sentence, it sounds like he says they didn't walk on the moon. Yeah. I felt like I will need to be talked down from this one, too. I'm pretty sure he gave away the conspiracy here. <laughs> Did he not? <laughs> Yeah, you always let it slip to an eight-year-old in a local library. Right, and yeah, they tricked the shit out of him, and he gave it up. <laughs> yeah, it's an entirely reasonable position, Heath, as long as you don't watch the rest of that video where right. he goes on to explain that we just haven't spent the money on. That. And it's it's really clear that a super old buzz is just trying to explain, trying to figure out how to explain to an eight-year-old that progress is significantly held up by politicians who won't spend money doing important stuff. That's what he's trying to pass out to this yeah. optimistic Blah, blah, blah. And the other part of the video, that's you. You sound like that. You're saying context. <laughs> it's also pretty important to remember that Buzz Aldrin and the other astronauts were just the pilots we were most willing to let die in 1960. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we weren't working with uh, the cream of the crop, if you know what I'm saying. We were absolutely working with the cream of the crop. They had the right stuff, God damn it! Did you see him punch that guy when he was like 900 yeah, years old? right. That was <laughs> so good. He does a Joe Pesci jump punch from My Cousin Vinny. It's so <laughs> fucking great. And by the way, I, I know that the, the right stuff was about the... Uh, not the but never mind. You know what? I'm not, giving, not even going back for that correction. No one's picking you up on that, mate. It's fine. Wait, the right stuff? That's not what that's about. 
So, yeah, so, but they explain to you, the tattoo artist explains to you, at the, I'm sorry, tattooer, self identified. Mm. <laughs> Fuck Not even a tattooist. Yeah, no, a tattooer. <laughs> I guess tattoo artist might be legally protected. Maybe he can't say that. I was just, he, I, I'll use the term he used. As a tattooer, he wants to explain to us that their goal is to make you think that you're a monkey man. And I'm like, a filthy one at that. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely your goal. <laughs> yep. But yeah, they want you to think you're a monkey man, a purposeless accident, Christian movie. It's a flat earth movie. Yep. It is inevitably a Christian movie. It's also inevitably an anti Semitist movie, but it's a Christian movie. So, Christian movie. Yeah, we got it. Right. Yeah. Christian, yep. Do, so, do these people believe that the firmament thing, that it's just like you would like bump your head if you went yep. to try to go to outer space? You'd like be like, yep. bink. Definitely, definitely some of them would. Yeah, definitely some of them. And then you'd fall back down, but not because of gravity, because of something else? Because of buoyancy. Many of them will tell you that the NASA hit the firmament and that's why shit exploded up there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the other thing this um, tattooer says is that all the pictures you've seen of the Earth in space are just expensive cartoons. And I'm like, mate, I wouldn't be so quick to complain about expensive cartoons if I did tattoos for a living. Yeah. Like you're really pissing your, <laughs> on your own doorstep there. I was so mad. He said so many times we don't have a picture of Earth from space that I actually Googled it. And I got three letters into Googling before Google was like, here's a picture of the Earth from space, mm, then. Yeah. Here you go. Yeah, so a, here's we, a lot of there's pictures. A there's so Do you want more? goddamn many of them. And this is also the first time I discovered that NASA is very clearly dual in their website. Their website is either for children who love space or idiots like me. Yes. So it's like, hey, kids, welcome. And also, Eli, yes, we have a picture of Earth from space. <laughs> Disappointed in you for Googling this. <laughs> and this is where they present uh, what they seem to think is one of their strongest arguments. The idea that all of the spacewalks are fake. They use the, they're, they're done in water. And we can tell because sometimes you can see bubbles rising off the astronauts as they do spacewalks. Hmm. You you can't see that. Mm -mm. No, nope. <laughs> no. Here's the thing. There are conspiracy theories about space where you're like, all right, if you didn't understand it, I can see why you would believe that, right? So like mm -hmm. when you see the things where the pockets stick out weird and they're like, that's a harness. It's like, yeah, if you don't understand how zero gravity affects fabric, that really does look like a fabric. Yeah. These dust particles do not look like bubbles. No, no, they, they don't. Also... <laughs> If you were really deep underwater and your suit is letting out bubbles, <laughs> that's also a really bad thing. That's really bad. Really, really bad. <laughs> well, and, and then we see poor Scott Kelly. We see oh. these guys doing their whole, it's more of a comment than a question bit at some Q&A that Scott <laughs> Kelly is doing. Fuck yes. Where they're asking about the bubbles in space. And of course... You can tell that he knows right away. He's like, Oh, you're one of those assholes, but he can't, but the audience doesn't yet know that he's one of those assholes. So he goes, ah, and then he gives the honest answer that the audience will be expecting. There's this fucking amazing moment where he goes, Oh, oh, because he gets confronted later by the guy. It's the same guy. He goes, You know what you could do? And I see the moment. <laughs> yeah. I see the moment where this literal genius who has spent his whole life trying to make this species of racist, evil, garbage monkeys even a little bit better say, you can fuck yourself. And then he's like, <laughs> you can use those images yourself well, if you want. This is the amazing thing. Because he's like, why are you selling those photos? They were paid for by the government. They were paid for by taxpayers. We should be able to have those public those, those photos for free. He's like, <laughs> yes. well, they're public domain. You can. He's like, well, they should be free to the taxpayers. Like you. That's what public domain means. Yeah, you just admit you, you don't know public. Domain. What you could have edited this out. This you got the edit. They button. are literally free. And you watch it. The other guy. <laughs> you watch the flat earther be like that. Fucking backfired. We should cut this. As he yes. <laughs> why the. Fuck was that in the movie? <laughs> Take it out. <laughs> he's selling this, but they, they, they're harassing him while he's selling this book that contains a bunch of these photos from space. And he's like, you can't sell this. Like, no, that what it means is that anyone can sell them. Mm. You fucking idiots. Also, I just want to point out that when he tries to do his gotcha question at the Q&A thing, his gotcha question literally is, well... Uh, I see all those bubbles and stuff. Could it be that you're filming <laughs> in an underwater pool and everybody goes nuts? Everybody laughs because he's a big guy. And I was like, what the fuck? 
underwater pool? Like, no, we're filming in an overwater pool, like in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Trick you. No, we won't photograph it. It's a ho- Australia is a hoax. They live in the, we live in the up, and Australia is in the down I, under? Like, what? And then we cut to fucking England's Miss Xanax 2017 again. Eyebrows. Yeah. So she's going to tell us that she's not buying this whole space station bullshit. Right. Okay. Her first argument is that if the space station goes that fast around the Earth, the astronauts would fall off. Yes, right. You know, like... (laughs) I assumed she was taking a piss out of them because they put like a stupid sound effect under her as well. And I thought, is she... I think she might be the poor. And maybe this is just British solidarity. You know, we're Northern (laughs) together. I'm on her side. But I think she's the poor. I don't think she believes that. I I hope not. Yeah. (laughs) You're just saying that so she doesn't draw one of her eyebrows onto your face. (laughs) Yeah, right, right. Send it to suck out your blood in the night or something. Marsh, it's behind you right now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but they explain that they're doing all of that like weightless looking shit on the ISS with wires and CGI. And a zero G plane. You know, they're just flying in a parabola, mm-hmm. which, you know, we can only do for 30 seconds. And right. the shots that we're currently watching are longer than 30 seconds, but we won't, <laughs> we won't touch on that. And also, well, so, but so, but there's no space up there. You can actually go as high as you want, Marsh, and, and then come back down. So they, you can, right. they can do yeah. it for that way makes, longer. That makes a lot of sense. You've, but also, <laughs> their other idea, therefore, has to be that Chris Hatfield was, you know, kept in hiding for months out of the way. So nobody would accidentally see him walking down the street when he's meant to be in space and stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. Except when they put him on a plane to fly parabolas about <laughs> where nobody would spot him. <laughs> What's that plane doing? Doing weird stuff in the air. I'm sure we shouldn't look into that in our airspace. Okay, okay, Marsh, you're so smart. Then explain to me why NASA, if they're not faking all of this video, would have grids on some of the walls in some of their facilities. Is it, exactly, exactly. Isn't that really bad? So they're like, oh, it's blue screen with grids. Isn't that really bad for blue screen? Yep. Like if you've got white grids and then the guy stood in front of the white grids who's got a shirt with white bits on, isn't that really bad? Like when, when like weather presenters start to disappear in front of the map because they're wearing the same color as the green screen? Sure is. Yeah. Okay, good. It's a perfect crime. Yeah, so they, they make this argument and then they're they're like, and, and you'll notice this, when we manipulate these videos, you can see they've been manipulated. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> we really need to spend more money on the CGI and the smile fees. Because like, I really think they're they're catching on like to a bunch of stuff where we just had to budget a little bit more for a couple yep. of things. Could've, like could've we, we had the money to launch uh, rockets to the fucking firmament, but we couldn't pay for smiles <laughs> and CGI mm-hmm. for the, the blue screen. Well, and they show us these videos where the video glitches and shit like that. And they're like, oh, you can tell it's being done in front of a green screen because look at all of these weird glitches that happen when we try to beam live video down from goddamn fucking space. And I'm like, oh, my video games are done on green screen, too. (laughs) Right? (laughs) That's how they do football as well, apparently. Yeah. This is also where they, they throw in one of my first best words. This is where they try out the term globe heads. Yep. <laughs> they, say, they say, why do these globe heads keep defending NASA? And I'm like, that's going on my business card right there. I wrote it in, my, I, in our uh, notes. I wrote, that is our word. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> but, but also, if, if they're calling us globe heads because we believe the world is a three-dimensional object... What heads do they think they are? Yes, right. <laughs> oh. I'm a proud flathead shit. Yeah, yeah, right. God damn it. Leave the pun based epithets to the professionals, you flat sos. <laughs> you can say globa, not global. <laughs> so and then we have this little fantasy where they they show us what it would look like if NASA sent somebody out to finally admit that they'd been faking it this whole time. Yes, and they would hire a guy with a shitty, thin ponytail. It's like, because oh. they couldn't find a physicist, so they found a pickup artist. That's what NASA would go for. Yeah. This guy is amazing, because the whole time, they're trying to do smart guy talk, but none of them can get smart guy talk down. So he keeps saying stuff like, <laughs> we will repay all the taxpayers back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, they can't clearly write smart people stuff at all but even if they had been able to write smart people stuff this guy is 
not a strong reader. So nope. there was, it didn't matter. No, he's not even B level. No, no uh, it's the unfortunate popcorn in in high school English where it'd be like popcorn this guy, and he's like the bird goes to that. You're like, oh, please, popcorn back to someone who can read good. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's also not helped by what he's reading. Because he's got them saying, you know, the money will will pay the money back, and it'll be distributed evenly between the citizens of America and America. And it's like, even <laughs> yes. he had to pause. Like, Sorry, am I reading this right? I must have got the wrong. No, that is the script. Okay, <laughs> okay, that, okay. All right. So, and then we hear from fucking Eddie Bravo, whose qualifications to speak on astrophysics are quote founder and owner of. 10th planet jujitsu <laughs> slash innovator of Brazilian jujitsu. <laughs> I yeah. want to know how he innovated Brazilian jujitsu so <laughs> bad. Like, he added extra planets to it and everything. Yeah, he's like he's like jujitsu <laughs> jazz. You know, he's just innovative. It's all about the moves he doesn't do. It's that kind of thing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> He also, he outlines his space expertise and how much knowledge he has about space, including that he uh, knows about a Newton star and a mm-hmm. super hive Norba. Yeah, he, he was, he <laughs> talks about how like he used to think he was so much better than everybody else because he knew what shape the earth was. <laughs> like we do, like us. And also, this is the first, not the worst offender here, but this is the first guy that cusses like with every word except the prepositions, but they're bleeping out all the cuss words, mm. right? It gets worse, but you cannot tell what this guy is fucking saying. Yeah, just tell me fuck. What is he? Is he saying fuck? Just, just, I want to hear the fuck. <laughs> and he's he's another of those people who his argument is that we've got Hubble Space Telescope in space, so why don't we point it at the Earth to get some awesome shots? It's like, mate, <laughs> you're essentially saying, I've got these binoculars. I'm going to see what my cock looks like. That's not what the tool is for. <laughs> it's not the direction you meant. Like, you, you basically want Hubble to knock on your door and try and sell you an aerial photo of your house. That's not what the tool's for. Okay. I feel like the the binoculars thing is a bad example. Like, I know yeah, what right. you're saying. It would be dumb to do the Hubble thing, but like, I mean, we've all, we've all done the binoculars. Well, and he starts pointing out once again, like, you know, how suspicious it is that NASA's always making all these CGI animations instead of just showing us actual video of the Big Bang. <laughs> <laughs> So fucking dumb. He's like, all the pictures of Earth are CGI except one. And it was created with a computer generated image. Uh, right? Like, it's every time they're like, it's, it's all fake except this one, which is also fake. They just don't admit that this one is fake. And what he doesn't get is like, all digital photos are computer generated. You <laughs> yes. like, right, right. Take a selfie. <laughs> Put it on your laptop, zoom in to like 20,000%, and you see how your face is made up of lots of weird squares? That means you're fake and you don't exist. <laughs> By your own. Remember when you did the penis binoculars and it was really confusing? It's like that. I've been a spreadsheet this whole time. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> Uh, and then they have this weird bit where he's apparently on some fucking podcast or whatever, yelling at the other three people in the small room with him. It's got to be Rogan. It, he's definitely on Rogan at some oh, point. Oh, he was literally on Rogan at the beginning of this scene. Now yeah. he's on his own podcast or okay, somebody else's. Yeah. 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 Joe Rogan is basically the undeclared collaborator on this. The number of times we see Rogan throughout this, he's basically the undeclared yes. collaborator on this movie. Yeah, It's weird. Rogan doesn't use the N-word during this interview with a person of color who's a Brazilian <laughs> jiu-jitsu expert. It's uh, so weird. Huh. So we're in selective. I'm not willing to say that he didn't do that. Well, yeah, not in this interview. clip. In this <laughs> clip. Yeah, the, the clip we're shown does not include the N-word. That's <laughs> literally as far as we can go. Yeah. The highest praise we have for Joe Rogan here. On- <laughs> 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 but he explains on his podcast that he's, you know, he's not running around telling people that they need to prove their claims like some criminal in a court. What? Mm. <laughs> I am entirely unsurprised that this guy's go-to metaphor, the first one in his arsenal, is being a defendant in court. That does not seem <laughs> to the slightest. Was he even clear, though, whether he... I don't think he knew. He tried to do a court thing, and he got confused halfway through. He's, he's like, yes, I'm like he the switched. prosecutor. I say guilt. If you're not guilt, the person who says... the def- it's flat. It's a fucking flat earth. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> the metaphor got away from me. Only criminals ask you to prove things. I right. drive a Dodge Stratus. 
And then we enter into the gravity, how does it work phase of this guy's <laughs> rant about how stupid he personally is, right? His first argument is, well, if gravity can hold whole oceans and great big skyscrapers, why can't it hold a helium balloon? <laughs> Dude, you really don't want to get into gravity in your flat earth movie. You just you skip, <laughs> you skip gravity and you skip the Chiron about tattooer. There's yeah. just things you can skip. It's yours. Why would you expose how little you know about testable kitchen sink reality right. <laughs> in your own movie? <laughs> or like, I, I, I genuinely can empathize with like, why does the spacesuit look like that? Those dust particles kind of look like bubbles, right? I get it. I don't get like, if you drop an apple, it's because it's thicker than you. What? what? Yeah. But this is it. He <laughs> believes it's all density, you know, things that are less dense go up. Things that are more dense go down. It's like, yeah, Eddie, but why is that? What's making the more <laughs> dense thing go down? Try you're not so to say close, the G man. word you're avoiding. You're so close. Right. Yeah, it's it's like the equivalent of saying, if you let go of an apple, it hits the floor. What made it hit the floor? Your fingers? Because you <laughs> stop holding it. It's like, y yes, yes, your fingers played a role. It's not, that's dumb. You're, you're putting words into my mouth. It, the apple's aware of its density and it has a mm -hmm. chart of other <laughs> air. Air has a density uh, and the apple looks at it. Yeah. It's flat, motherfucker. <laughs> Butterflies equally are aware of their density. <laughs> yes. Uh huh. Well, but so, okay, but here's the problem with you guys' argument is that you're a bunch of fucking Nazis because <laughs> Werner Braun Braun was a Nazi and he did rockets. He kind of came up with the whole thing. So rockets are Nazis. Sure. Also, fun fact about uh, Von Braun, he had the accent of a Quebecois guy doing a <laughs> ransom call <laughs> after a kidnapping. Uh, well, who was communist, yeah. <laughs> through a voice modulator. I also like, because... One of the guys in this movie is like super fucking anti-Semitic, right? Yes. Yeah. At least one. So they're like, Werner von Braun was a Nazi, but to clarify, a bad one, like a bad a one who was faking the... Yes, well, yeah, right. Ab absolutely. In fact, <laughs> they bleep out the word Nazi. Yes. We don't hear the word Nazi. They censor the word Nazi. It's like, yeah, you didn't want to piss off your audience there, did you, Eric Dubé? <laughs> With Eric Dubé of the rap fame behind the songs Bruce Hitler and Goyim Revolution, which were genuinely Jesus. songs what? that uh, Eric Dubé has recorded. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got an, he's got an anti-Semitic rap album. Goyim? Goyim Revolution. Goyim wow. Revolution. And Bruce Hitler. And Bru does he is there like somebody named Bruce Hitler now who's like the great great grandson of I didn't get fully through it. I must admit, I wasn't following I was I was I was feeling the beat, but I wasn't really paying attention to, to the lyrical picture he was painting. So and the way that they introduce Werner von Braun here too is that they have a bunch of like Werner von Braun quotes that they're reading in the silly voice modulated evil voice but they're also <laughs> mixing them in with like things they're pretty sure he would have said you know yeah, like, like I'm gonna make so much fucking money it's crazy which I don't think was a direct <laughs> quote I would I could I don't know about that one particular <laughs> yeah. how, how about Jesus Christ these guys can't fucking act about uh, Neil Armstrong was that was that a, a, a verbatim from Braun I believe that was verbatim, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, and of course, we also learn here that this is too appropriate for god-awful movies because the globe head view is refuted by a little document called The Bible. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I forgot about globe head the slur. <laughs> so then we cut to Marcia's best works. We go to Mexico. We meet Santos Bonacci, whose qualifications are listed as, quote, <laughs> this is the best one, musician slash astrotheologist. <laughs> astrotheologist. I don't even know what that would mean. Is that like what I, religion <laughs> is the sun? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, Venus is definitely Muslim. I mean, yeah, look right. At it, uh, clearly. Right? Definitely. Clearly. That's why it's veiled. <laughs> In fairness, he's the first ologist we've heard from. So he's closest <laughs> to science than anything. No, you're else. right. It wasn't a tattooologist or a rapologist. Just because they wouldn't let that guy call himself a tattooologist. But, <laughs> That's you know, true. He tried. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Well, they didn't know how many O's to put in it, honestly. That, that's what fucked it up. So. I think we know Uranus is Catholic. So, but here's my, this guy. I absolutely need to hear this guy 
on Be Reasonable. He is yes. 18 seconds into his profanity-filled rant before he has told us that evolution is bullshit, the problem is those demon-crat atheists, and NASA runs Disney. <laughs> NASA runs <laughs> Disney. Oh, dude, but NASA doesn't have that kind of budget like Disney. What are you talking about? <laughs> so dumb. And he says, and if you don't believe me, it's because you're redacted. There's that's when the mm. beef's starting. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine thinking that this weird rant in which he includes, he says that uh, the round earth was invented in 1542 by the Jesuits. Mm -hmm. Imagine thinking this rant <laughs> was helpful to your argument. Like, I know! Cut this guy, just cut him! <laughs> well, how are you going to cut, though, your only Ptolemaic astrology? <laughs> <laughs> that is true, he's got, he's got value. And I love just the little things they have to leave in, because it's the only stuff of his that wasn't bleeped. Like, for example, well, these, he was talking about how everybody these days believes the, round, the Earth is round. He says, well, all of our intelligent ancestors will be rolling in their graves. It's like, that's... That's neither of the phrases. You've hit neither nope. of those phrases. <laughs> <laughs> well, he also points out that, like, you know, what are the odds that stars wouldn't twinkle? Uh, and I, and everything he says is like, he's like, you know, well, why is it that all the stars with the same luminosity have the exact same luminosity? Yeah. And then, yeah. As if that's not dumb enough, he's like, do you really mean to tell me that the Earth just happens to orbit at 66,600 miles per hour? Mm. Like <laughs> Satan, a Satan number? It would pick a Satan number? Times yeah. 100. I mean, I don't mean to tell him that because it isn't true. It's more like 67,000 and, and would, change. You out. have to round a real weird ass way to get to 66,600, yeah. but also like you also have to use miles per hour. So it's not like satanic in England, right? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> yeah, like like mainland Europe, France, they're, 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 they've got a different system. It's a different, go it's like baphometic, but not satanic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Imperial, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> he also says at one point, how come the stars in the sky look the same for thousands of years? It's like, because we aren't alive for longer than that. So we can't right. tell the difference. It oh, just takes God. longer to change. He goes at one point, he, the argument from fucking etymology, he goes, hello, horizon means horizontal. Hello, sea level means it's level. Yeah. And, yeah. and then he <laughs> says, if, it, if we were on a globe, you'd have to call it sea you can hear the dot, 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 and then he goes, curve. You'd yes. have to call it C curve. I saw that in Marsh's notes before I wrote this, and I thought, that's a pretty solid joke, Marsh. <laughs> no, no, no. So, yeah, he can't call it C level. You've got to call it C curve. He also says you can't have tectonic plates. It'd have to be tectonic balls. And I thought, yeah, keep going. You can't have the magic circle. It'd have to be the magic sphere. You can't live in a flat. You'll have to live in a round. Keep going, keep going. He also takes a moment to yell at Laura Eisenhower. What? Yeah, like, fuck you, Laura Eisenhower. Like she turned him down for a date. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He also refers to her as the granddaughter of her grandfather. <laughs> yep. It's damning. Which, to be fair, she is. Laura That's the Eisenhower, only true thing he's The granddaughter <laughs> of her grandfather. He gets one. Well, to be fair, he said a lot of other true shit. It was all just bleeped out because fuck shit, shit fuck is true as well. <laughs> that is true. That is true. He's constantly bleeped. He also says at one point, uh, to believe this, you'd have to be stupid beyond your wildest imagination. It's like, yeah, but like, if I'm that stupid, wouldn't my powers of imagination be quite <laughs> limited? So like, it wouldn't be that bad. <laughs> he also, he concludes here by telling us that astrology doesn't use the roundness of the earth and its calculations. Yep. So he's like, either I'm wrong or astrology is bullshit. And I just wrote my notes. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, clearly this guy needs a minute to work out his Laura Eisenhower issues. So we're going to pause for that. But let me uh, first give act three, the hard sell. We'll fucking shit, shit, sucker, fuck. We'll bitch, mother, pity, shit, fuck. Can son of a bitch. Piece of shit, asshole, fuck. Find out the answer to these questions and more when we return for the somehow less coherent conclusion of Level. 
Lou, 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 doing skeptic stuff. Skeptic stuff is my favorite stuff. Hey, Marsh. What's you up to do? <laughs> hey, Marsh. What's going on? Oh, hey, Noah. Hey, Heath. I'm just sending back this stuff that I ordered, but using the mail can be such a pain. Oh, why don't you try stamps.com? What's stamps.com? Stamps.com brings all the services of the U.S. Postal Service right to your home computer and printer. I used it to send the insurance claims last year when I got my van scraped. Did someone say manscaped? No, no, I said van scraped. Just go back. Just go back. Too late, baby. Get ready for lather and leather. Not so fast. Wool Dasher Mizzle, what are you doing here? You should know better than to cast a shadow on these lands, Dark One. The podcast of is a neutral zone. The High Council won't stand for this. The High Council is dead, Dark One. And soon you shall join them. The Blade of Orin Ra? How? I have done many things for Blood Manscaped Man, and I am about to do one more. Sorry, guys. What the hell is happening right now? I, I, I no do, you, do you guys get paid for these ads? Almost never. <laughs> Occasionally. <laughs> Hi, I'm Bryce Lyson. And I'm Alex Bolson. And welcome to NASA's new educational series, Our Amazing Universe. Now, if you're watching this, it means you're either a child fascinated by space. Or you're a full-grown adult whose unchecked mental illness has them trolling through all available NASA footage in the hopes of catching us in the act of manufacturing a worldwide conspiracy to deny God and funnel money to Satan-worshipping Jews. So today we're going to be learning about Venus, the the brightest planet in the Earth's sky. But that's not all. We'll also be learning about the effects of the social internet on the spread of misinformation, as every syllable, frame, and image we show is slowly dissected by the intellectual versions of a societal cancer. So get on board the spaceship Curiosity and let's explore. Also, please don't kill your girlfriend and children before yourself. That's the one thing we're asking. Just do you only. Suicide murder, not (laughs) murder-suicide. And we're back for still more of this shit, and we're going to rejoin the action on some video shot from a plane of a mountain that wouldn't be visible if the Earth was round. (laughs) Trust us on that one. (laughs) This is just an argument from some guy, unknown, filmed some mountain unknown that's the level of argument we're at here brilliant well no no no. so there are clouds in that video and near that mountain it's very convincing it's definitely (laughs) the mountain they say it is do they not know about planes being pretty high up a lot of the time nope Mm -mm. do they nope nope I feel like they think they're ballpark on the ground. There's no way that they know about planes. Otherwise, they wouldn't be flat Earth. Yeah, <laughs> that is that is true. I mean, bear in mind, they, they believe first and foremost the evidence of their own perception. And most of the time that they see planes, they're on the ground as they get in them. That's true. And then they get out That's and true. on the ground. So like no, planes right. are on the ground. That's just evidence. Right. Okay, but if this... If this was the case, if there were mountains that you can see, but you shouldn't be able to, if the hoax was real about the round earth, that would be caught a lot. So, like, they think we forgot to blur out that mountain during I guess, that yeah, plane right. ride, right, but like, normally and we're normally we blurring do. them when relevant relative to the distance from the plane exactly the mount- like what the fuck do they think is happening well and that's the big fucking thing is that if this was the case you wouldn't need this video every single person who'd ever been on a plane on a day that wasn't cloudy would have this evidence <laughs> exactly. would have yeah. seen the rest of the earth yes right <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you joined your first plane ride, Billy? Yeah, is that the Great Wall of China? Yeah, it is. It's so Mm -hmm. weird that we could see it from here. Right over there. Yeah, he's like, he says at one point that, oh, this is where they explain how shit really hit the fan when flat earthers discovered zooming in. 
Oh, right? fuck how they write about that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. The Nikon P900 is the only thing flat earthers agree on and they never stop talking about it. <laughs> you ne- you can't talk to flat earth for more than 10 minutes without them bring up a fucking Nikon P900. Now, look, you can zoom all the way in. See that boat disappearing over the horizon? Let's zoom all the way in. Oh, I can see it now. I mean, yes, it's made out of wobbly lines as if it's distorted by some sort of optical illusion. But from that, we can just learn that the further things get away, the wobblier their lines get. Right. Yeah, the wobblier they become. That's just science. Yeah. Okay. But after like 900 or whatever that stands for, it does not. Be, it's not right. It's, it can't be visible forever. That's the thing is that we could zoom in and also watch it go over the fucking horizon. Even if it was flat, <laughs> it wouldn't be visible forever on everything. Yeah, they've they've never done that. What they do is they watch something disappear, zoom in, and go, "Aha! I can see it." And then they turn their cameras off. They don't stay there <laughs> watching it disappear. <laughs> Z- zoom it's harder. I need to zoom harder. They seem to think that like when an invention happens, then epistemology change like like when newton dis- that's what newton discovered gra- before that it was just the buoyancy and whatever but then some of us had gravity because he found it right yeah. and just you know and then when we found the nikon 900 or whatever then we could zoom so we had we it's right flat it's now. the fucking wily e. coyote school yeah. of knowledge yeah <laughs> everyone <laughs> caught exactly. gravity the way we all caught the omicron variant there, yeah, that's it yeah <laughs> And also, who is this guy who's talking now? He didn't get a fucking Chiron. He doesn't rise to the level of fucking Nazi rap artist slash astro economist or something. Who is this? No, he must have failed at that. And it was going to be embarrassing. (laughs) But he does have a wall of hats behind him. Mm. And I've never <laughs> wanted a house to burn down more yeah. in my entire life. Yeah, he's got a wall of baseball caps like they're fucking hunting trophies. Like he's killed a load oh. of yours and he's mounted them <laughs> honestly, on his wall. Well, honestly, that's the, yeah, that's, if you're displaying it for that reason and that reason alone. Entirely reasonable. <laughs> on his other wall, though, is the exact same flat earth poster is, uh, that is on the wall behind me right now, which I got oh, really no. excited about. I've got that poster. It's on my wall behind me. <laughs> Mine's in a nicer frame, obviously, but I've got the same poster. There's some amazing next level platitude shit that goes on here too, right? Where he starts thanking all the other flat earthers. This is an actual quote. He says, every flat earther has played their part and we wouldn't be where we are if it wasn't for you. (laughs) What are you talking about? I mean, gotta hand it to him. Yeah, it's very Z-list celeb doing a cameo that they've not bothered reading ahead of time. It's like, yeah, I I really like what you're doing. (laughs) And if you weren't doing the thing that you're doing, we wouldn't be, be right now where we are or aren't. It wouldn't be done. <laughs> also, also, in case you're worried that this guy who collects Monster Energy hats is sexist, don't worry. <laughs> he shouts out the guys and also the wonderful women. Yes, right, exactly. Equality. <laughs> okay, but he's saying that like they're all working together, doing their part to make the flat earth happen. Right. Like what? he says, everybody's just picking up the slack in their quadrant. They bring they bring it together and then the earth is flat because we all but scientific theories aren't supposed to have like a hard-working zone defense <laughs> that you put together that's not jim Bayheim doesn't run that's, science for that's crazy yeah he also says that flat earth proofs are coming out all of the time yeah which is why 90 percent of eric debay's arguments are taken from a pamphlet written in 1881 by a snake oil <laughs> salesman in a sex cult <laughs> samuel robotham the images they show us the diagrams they show us are 140 years Jesus old that's the one they're showing us in this movie they're coming out and do, and when he wrote that when he said that i wrote in my notes i'm like why wouldn't you show any of them to us that man come on <laughs> <laughs> and just when you're thinking wow it's weird how every single commercial airline pilot is in on this scam they explain that a lot of pilots aren't in on the scam actually <laughs> okay <laughs> look Let's be real. And I don't want to insult anybody here, but pilots are the eighth dumbest profession. No, they're not. Okay. <laughs> they're handsome. They dress up like a sex toy from the 60s and they nope. don't fly the yes. plane for 98% you, you really of the want ride. to rank uh, professions uh, when we're podcasting? <laughs> you really want we to- share a profession with hey. Joe goddamn Rogan, Eli. Don't open that <laughs> fucking door. I, I didn't say okay. we ranked higher. <laughs> I'm just saying that if you're going to do a general survey... <laughs> So, yeah, so we get this montage of them bothering pilots saying, hey, like, when you fly a plane, can you see how round Earth is? And they're like, no, you fucking idiot. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. 
I couldn't see any signs of gravity either. I couldn't see the gravity <laughs> moving up to meet me or whatever. So that's probably fake. What? And a lot of these pilots have got a very kind of, I've let you in the cockpit and now I've just realized you're a crazy person vibe. That's yes. what they've got. His, uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm just going to say yes until you don't get out of box cutter and take over this plane. I'm yeah. going to just try and de-escalate letting you in here. Oh, it's getting late. I got to get back to the cockpit. This yeah. is... Much like NASA educational videos, they are viewed, cockpits are viewed by two kinds of people, curious children and crazy people. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Well, and then there's this amazing moment where they're like, and if you don't believe us, just look at this flight manual that the government produces that says the earth is flat and doesn't rotate. And I'm like, guys, crop out the part where it says simplifying assumptions over that list. Okay. It says it right. (laughs) Yeah. Also, crop out the other simplifying assumptions, <laughs> yes! which include that your plane has no, you have to assume your plane has no turbines and that wind is constant. So does, does Eric DeBay think those things are true yeah. too? That yep. planes don't have engines <laughs> and that wind is constant? Wind gusts are a Jewish conspiracy. <laughs> Absolutely. It proves that everything is exactly 273 Kelvin and one atmosphere at all times. There are two dimensions in the universe. Uh, <laughs> This led me to a worrying truth that was not flat earth, which is how many pilots had to crash into the ground going, sorry, I was accounting for roundness before they put this into the manual. (laughs) (laughs) Kind of supports my point about the profession. That's all I'm saying. I thought I would just kind of roll into it because you land on a ball, right? You just softly, you can't Uh, hurt yourself on a ball. And then we get the saddest fucking thing in the entire video in my mind, which is some dude taking this, those simplifying uh, assumptions to like some fucking school board meeting or something. This is the best. (laughs) Yeah. He's like, who do I give my evidence to? And you can see the guy be like, the garbage. You can put it in He's the like, garbage. He's like, Larry can throw it away for you, man. Give it to Larry. And Larry's like, dude, fuck you. Okay, fuck, <laughs> fuck you, <laughs> Kyle. But honestly, if the rest of the movie had just been those two guys rolling around on the ground. <laughs> oh, God. This is the guy shouting in a public meeting about his PDF. And he, yes. he wants a law passed that bans the teaching that the earth is round. And I wrote yes. that. How stupid is... Oh, and Florida, and Florida just passed it. Florida yeah. just made that law. That's oh. really, just become law in Florida. God. And he finishes his dumb rant. And you see all these people at this town meeting who clearly by like law had to let him talk for however many minutes. Yep. So he finishes talking and then there's like a little bit of silence. And they're like... Oh, he's done. And then all of them look up from clearly the candy crush that they've been playing. <laughs> right. Any Literally. other new business? Bing, bing. Yeah, right. Cool, bing, bing, Max. Bing, bing, great. Bing, bing. Gavel. You guys see my fish tanks? Look how many fish right. tanks I have. <laughs> so, oh, and then this is also where they explain to us that um, satellites, which they they describe as, the narrator calls, quote, those magical orbiting aluminum tin cans. Okay. Genuinely, Hmm. do they think satellites exist but are floating on balloons? Mm -hmm, Yes. Or do they think they don't exist? No. Because they make both of those points. They believe, first of all, they believe that you have to modify tin cans with aluminum sometimes, but also, yes, they believe that satellites are actually just on balloons the whole time. Yeah. That's how they get them swell pitchers. (laughs) Well, the, the ones that don't disappear in the Bermuda Triangle. Well, yeah, right, right. Where, where it is awfully NASA suspicious all of satellites. how NASA launches all of their shit right into the interdimensional portal that is. Yeah, I, I was honestly like, if they had started arguing that they were trying to like beat back the kaiju with their rockets this whole time, <laughs> like I would yep. have been zero percent surprised. I would have been like, well, yeah, if you figured after the moon landing, that was the next logical step. No, you have to you have to drift with somebody to be in the same <laughs> robot to beat up a kaiju. You have to it's a psychic connection. It's really it's important. He says NASA is the largest consumer of helium for obvious reasons. And I was like, is it is it because everything's a balloon? Yes. Mm-hmm. And it, <laughs> it is. is. It is. <laughs> yeah. They're just, they, they, he think in his head in 1971, someone was like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We got to start investing in helium, guys. We got to buy like eight bajillion pounds of helium a year because I'm exhausted. <laughs> uh, this is just one satellite. The thing is, they say that they have this thing about like all the satellites that crash have got balloons on them. 
And therefore, he assumed that all satellites are on balloons. And that's the same as arguing that aeroplanes don't exist because hot air balloons do. Right. That is their <laughs> argument here. Right. Well, yeah. So to be clear, NASA uses fucking balloons for a lot of shit because you can get into the like low Earth orbit fucking levels pretty easily, relatively easy with a giant balloon compared to trying to launch the shit up into space. So if all you need to do is go up there, check some temperature, check some radiation readings or something like that, that's the way to go. So they have this lady that works on NASA's balloon program and they're like, see, NASA has balloons. QE motherfucking D. <laughs> can I? Can I just say there is nothing more heartbreaking in this entire documentary than this poor balloon lady? Because, you know, the balloon, they're at the bottom of the totem pole at NASA, right? They're not launching any rocket. Her excitement and enthusiasm is the most heartbreaking thing in this entire documentary. <laughs> mm. She was like, finally, someone, did you see someone bought the footage of me talking about our balloon work? Did you hear that, Dave? And Dave was like, I'm going to keep blowing, Susan. <laughs> <laughs> that showed up on this. It's not balloon science. Okay. Okay. You're saying, notice how you never see satellites from the earth and i'm like you could be showing a video of anything except a satellite from the earth right now and you're not <laughs> <laughs> i see satellites from the earth all the fucking time i have a little thing on my phone that tells me which satellite i just saw going by yep. <laughs> like my guy oh, look there's so many like <laughs> hey you could easily disprove your entire worldview but like that's like $60 at your local museum, man. Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ. You showing us a clip of balloon fight now? Yeah. <laughs> do you think that, is that proven something? Is that the Mario balloon? 64 battle mode? <laughs> and then we head down or I guess across, you know, I'll be open-minded to Antarctica. And they openly wonder why nobody will let a bunch of random YouTubers walk around Antarctica and see if there's an edge. I am 100% okay with the people who made this movie exploring. And I'm serious. If that's oh, yeah. actually a law, I will fight it. We for need them. to get rid of that law. I will. Yeah, I am yeah. their ACLU and they are my KKKK. They <laughs> absolutely can explore Antarctica. That was 4Ks. It's not, that's not a racist story. It's just They're a my, very they poorly get an extra named K organization. Because of how much I love them. Potassium. <laughs> so, yeah. And of course, this is, and every fucking flat earth documentary has to eventually pull out this footage of Admiral Richard Byrd saying that Antarctica would be worth exploring because there's probably a lot of good shit there, right? Yeah, he's saying Antarctica's big. No one's disagreeing that Antarctica's big. Nope. No one's disagreeing with that. <laughs> <laughs> nope. And and then they're like, he's like, you know, we should really explore and see if there's great resources. And they're like, why didn't we ever do that? We, I'm like, we did ever do that. We did. They're still doing that. There's people doing that right now. I mean, Admittedly, the research these days is a lot sadder and it's a lot more day after tomorrow mm -hmm. than we'd like it to be. But <laughs> how big is it really? Is it really big? It's really big. Yeah. Are we sure? Yeah, that's, it's, it's as big as North America. Yeah. Heath can go with right, the right. YouTube. No, yeah, help, help him out. <laughs> okay. He's the extra K. <laughs> that's, that's why it's not surprising. Admiral Byrd said, we saw land there the size of North America. And people are like, oh, there's land there, the size of North America. It's like, yeah, it's called Antarctica. We right. know it exists. We've it's on what? your fucking that, globe. That's not surprising to us. I don't know. Show me an upside down penguin. Right, maybe, yeah. And I'll think about <laughs> it. Zoom in on an upside down <laughs> penguin. So, and then, okay, at this point, I did not think it was possible to meet my favorite talking head in this movie, right? I couldn't imagine <laughs> that he was yet to come. He was. <laughs> this is where we go to. We head to Dallas, Texas to meet Tanner Stewart, entrepreneur slash self-made millionaire. <laughs> entrepreneur. Oh, my God. Entrepreneur. Is it any job title as bullshit as entrepreneur? <laughs> it's, it's from the French word. <laughs> nope. Entre meaning to come in and prendre meaning to take stuff. You know, can you think of anybody else who by de definition comes in and takes stuff? We've got words yeah. for that. He's a between taker. They do the saddest little pan over like his quote unquote bling. And it's just like a nice car and a boat. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like a hillbilly <laughs> cribs is what we're watching here. At yes. This point. Yeah, exactly. Right. And and then he he's he's going to explain it to us, right? Because he says, well, people who are stupid fucking idiots, when they find out I'm a flat earther, say, well, why don't you just go to the edge of the earth and jump off? And let me see if I can explain it to you, stupid fucking idiot head poo poo brains. I was so excited at this moment. I was like, is he going to try to go find the edge? <laughs> <laughs> is he going to walk to something? 
This is amazing. And he starts doing this whole thing where he's like, all right, well, let's try. Imagine all of this pond is the water, all the water in the world. And you can't fall off the edge of that, can you? And I'm like, right, because it's not like a finite <laughs> flat object. But if it was, <laughs> and then he starts to realize that his analogy isn't working, but he's already out there by his pond. So he has to like kind of rethink it out loud. And then he's like, because there's a wall. Right, like this pond. <laughs> oh, he went too far to swim back. He went past half. Yeah, of right. His own yeah, stupid exactly. pond metaphor. <laughs> He's literally at the edge of a pond, describing how ponds don't have edges. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Says, yep. you, you see how I'm soaking wet right now? Yeah. And he, he's talking about the edge. He's saying there's no edge there. And his visual is the edge of the pond. And he's saying there's nothing beyond that. There's no water beyond it. It's like, there's no water beyond it. But like, look at your pond. There's grass beyond it. And then there's Texas beyond it. And then beyond that, there's America. And if you keep going far enough, there's your fucking pond again, mate. Because we're all <laughs> <in gold. laughs> But then ultimately we get to the end of it and... The answer to the whole, why don't you go off the, you know, go to the edge of the earth and, and, and jump off is, yeah, we should do that. Yeah. yeah. But it's like, you dude, you made me imagine that that pond was all the fucking water in the earth for nothing. Your answer was <laughs> sure. Yeah. For nothing. Well, to be fair, past the edge of the earth is where Star Wars and Star Trek are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They are both true. Okay. But more importantly, more importantly, past the edge of the earth. <laughs> Is where his dog is taking a shit. Oh, really? I like a giant. <laughs> yeah, his dog is taking a shit in the frame, which right is very in the funny. Frame. <laughs> <laughs> oh, talk about science. <laughs> and the dog's taking a long, like aggressive, difficult shit. Like no. goes up and down a couple times. It's oh, the yeah. fucking no. greatest. Too much people food shit for sure. <laughs> but yeah, he gets down on one knee. He's like beyond the edge of the earth. That's where Star Wars is, and it's real. I'm shitting right in the frame. The do dog might as well interrupt like that. Sorry, it's so good. He literally says, what if you could have your Star Wars and your Star Trek 2? Right, and I'm like, that's the J.J. Abrams reboot, dumbass. We've already had that. <laughs> There's a, a bit as well, He talks when he's talking about the pond and all the water, he says, water must be contained. And it cuts to his three consecutive hot tubs as an illustration of the water <laughs> yeah. being contained. And I thought my theory at this point was he's trying to sell this big house, but he's too cheap to pay for a real estate agent to come and take photos. <laughs> so he's using this movie to show off the features of his house. Right. So, so imagine the earth is like this brand new fitted kitchen with two ovens <laughs> and a attractive kitchen island in the middle of it. Can you imagine that? <laughs> you know what would hold the earth in? Granite countertops. That's right. You see how this rug really ties the earth together. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> and then, so then he's, he spells out the timeline of deception for us, right? We go all the way back to 1955. That's when we did the secret operation with Admiral Byrd that he was just on fucking television talking about, super secret. Mm. And then in 1958, they start uh, NASA so that they can work on their, quote, Upper Space Mind Control Program. Sure. Would have loved more details there. No, nope. That, that was, a, that's <laughs> assumed knowledge. They did that in the prequel, apparently. Okay. I think it's just because they won't say outer space, so they say upper. Oh my space. God, you're right. Yeah, that's true. That I'm is actually sure. true. <laughs> they, can't, they can't say yeah. outer because that would mean right? like omnidirectional be... outer. <laughs> So it's just the up is where space so. might be, but really just the firmament domey thing. And then they point out that in 1959, 12 nations, eventually followed by 40 some odd more, signed the Antarctic Treaty to say that nobody was allowed to go all the way to the edge of Earth because that would fuck them right up. I will fight this. If this is real, Absolutely. I will fight this to the ends of the <laughs> Absolutely, earth. Absolutely, man. I want these YouTubers in Antarctica. <laughs> I've read a lot of citation needed essays. I know how this ends. Uh, yeah, right, right. Just a bunch of Jewish bankers in snow forts laughing like <laughs> 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 We get all the us. snowballs. This is awesome. I'm really rich. Xanax lady comes on to remind us that they don't care about us. If they knew, they wouldn't tell us the truth. I'll tell her about Antarctica just so she can have somewhere to store her eyebrow pencils. There you go. <laughs> And then uh, we go back to the entrepreneur guy. He now has a backwards baseball cap on in case you didn't hate him enough. Because <laughs> he's a man of the people. Uh, right. And he explains his $200,000 prove the earth is round challenge. Now, at first, you might think that he's uh, committing to giving a fifth of a million dollars to the first person that can prove the earth is round. He knows better than that. Hmm. His challenge is that you have to make water stick 
to the bottom of a spinning ball. Like it would have to on Earth, on the <laughs> and, on the right. bottom of Earth, that is. But 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 then he shows a video of someone demonstrating that, and he's like, "But not like that." Yeah, right, <laughs> right. He actually shows. He's like, "You can't make water stick to the bottom of the ball while it's spinning." Here's a video we tried for a fucking while. You cannot <laughs> look at it's. This is just a really short clip, but we for like so long. We tried. I, it, you can't do it. That was my year. And then, and then he says he has a challenge for Neil deGrasse Tyson personally. We're going to spend essentially the rest of the movie yeah. with all the various people saying, and you know what else is fat on Neil no deGrasse Tyson? His ass. His ass is fat. <laughs> That's it's it gets real fucking weird, <laughs> right? Yeah. It really like, does. You guys all felt this movie shift from like here's our flat Earth documentary to like. I personally would like to fist fight Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> yeah, like the next three or four minutes is just like a roast of Neil deGrasse Tyson. And to be honest, if they wanted ammo, we could have probably suggested a few things they didn't cover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Clearly, the entire cast just all ended up scream crying angry at Neil deGrasse Tyson during their filming. And it worked as a closing montage where they like, right. No, he's like, Oh, we got me. ourselves yeah. a yeah. montage. <laughs> if Neil deGrasse Tyson is so confident, why won't he debate Eric Dubé? At which point I immediately wrote in my notes, Marsh, you have to debate Eric Dubé. <laughs> uh, so I tried and he refused. Oh, that's really? the fun thing about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've invited <laughs> Eric Dubé to oh, be reasonable on multiple okay. occasions. He's not done it. What is he hiding <laughs> is my well, question. <laughs> if you were to tune into his rap albums, you'd get a bit of a clue as to what he's hiding. Yeah. <laughs> Dave Murphy as well is complaining. Neil, he said, Dave Murphy says, I sent Neil deGrasse Tyson some questions and he, he refused to answer, uh -huh. which is... Interesting, because when I invited him on Be Reasonable, he said, I'm not interested in speaking with you and aiding in your collaboration with the criminal establishment, because that would make me collaborate. <laughs> so why did he refuse to answer my questions, Dave Murphy? Clearly part right. of the big disc. <laughs> ah, Look, Noah, I know we don't have debates on scathing atheists, nope. but could we just play select clips of the debate? <laughs> So, and then we see like Neil deGrasse Tyson on Joe Rogan and they're like, yeah, man, we tried to get you on to debate one of these flat earth guys. And he's like, yeah. And I told you to go fuck yourself. And they're like, they're like, yeah, you sure you sure did. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know, he doesn't always get the answer right, but that's the right answer. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but of course, according to this movie, it's because NASA was afraid to let Neil disgrace Tyson debate Eric Dubé because they knew that Eric Dubé would mop the fucking floor with him. Yeah, even in a 15 minute, a fifth, he said he just gave him 15 minutes. I thought, yeah, because I've talked to a lot of flat earthers and the one thing I know they universally value is brevity. They'll just take 15 minutes and they'll yep. be happy. They won't go longer than that. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're watching an hour long video. I would love a f an actual 15 minute debate. Just like, no, because the, it's flat. It, it is flat. It is so. Do so to explain clouds. I'm from... The yeah. end. Uh, here's an upside down penguin. I uh, spent the rest of my time. Yeah. I win. This is also the only time we get a clip of what Eric Dubé looks like. And they try to make him look badass, but he looks like Voldemort's sad goth son. <laughs> just with his sad little black lights. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, Matthew McConaughey in uh, season one of True Detective, but somehow more so. Yes. <laughs> well, and okay. Normally, I would say... And that's the end. But the credits of this movie are so delightful because this is the first time where we really get to hear ODD TV go off on his rap. So all of us oh just kept taking fucking notes. Mm. His rap song introduces the Flat Earth crew. Yes. Yeah. And they're all fucking crazy people. So it's like, there's my friend Nick. He's a real schizophrenic. And then there is <laughs> Ashley. She's going through a lot right now. <laughs> it does. But like the way they wrap all the names, it's like the bit in the middle of um, Wannabe by the Spice Girls. You know, so we got Dave in the place and he don't believe in space. It's basically that whole thing. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Very much so. It's so good. He raps like a metronome is going to punch him at any yes. moment and he's not <laughs> yeah. sure when it's going to happen. But like a metronome is going to throw something in his face every so often if he doesn't. And he's only learned quarter notes. Like he doesn't know. Yes. A triplets or eighths, sixteenths. Right. Not yet. He's, <laughs> so he's, he's learning, right learning the notes one at a time. If me dancing was a rap song. <laughs> 
Well, yeah, it, it's worse than that. I understand that Mr. Dubé isn't interested in debating Marsh, but if he is willing, ODD, I would like to challenge you to a rap battle. <laughs> oh, it's not against me, yes. not against me, but against Baba Brinkman. Oh, there you so, go. We will I, coordinate that. I don't think that if you can make <laughs> Bobo, I would not do that to Bobo Brinkman. He's Canadian. He'll say yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Marsh, thank you so much for sharing your fucking weird ass expertise with us again <laughs> this week. Oh, man, it's my pleasure. Absolutely my pleasure. Uh, I would have been so disappointed if we had to do this one without you. I'm glad you could be on. <laughs> and, of course, be sure to check the show notes for links to some of Marsh's other projects, hopefully an upcoming interview with Bleep Bleep McBleepy face over there. <laughs> and while that does it for our review of Level, that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to tantalize you back next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah, sometimes the answers to the tactics of the devil are the love of Christ. Sometimes it's faith. But sometimes it's just straight up kicking their asses. So we'll be watching The Sixth Day starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, it's almost like I'm going to be at a convention <laughs> that weekend. Okay, so... <laughs> So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 341 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon owners that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Skating Alien, Citation Data, D&D Minus, and The Skeptic Card, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media, and our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnik with people on Mars. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a check of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosley, got no illusions, promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. Eric Dubé is a Nazi rhombus the shape, and he's afraid to debate me and prove otherwise. Oh, shit. Eli spent the rest of his life lobbying international bodies to let these assholes lead an Antarctic expedition. Oh, yay. The editor realized that the beliefs in Santa Spanacci's rant actually spelled out Jewish conspiracy in Morse code. <laughs> Marsh <laughs> refused to debate Eric Dubé at QED this year so we could trick him on stage and dump a bucket of pink <laughs> <laughs> Open invitation, Eric Dubé. Open yeah. invitation. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved.